This one science video is about enzymes. In general, we talk about metabolism. What we're really talking about is how the body controls chemical reactions. In a test tube, chemical reactions are simply maintained by molecules just bouncing around. They might be colliding, and they might make a chemical bond only if they collide with the right energy and at the right angle. As you can see, that didn't happen. Whereas biological systems can increase this, the frequency of these correct collisions by providing a platform. That would be an enzyme. The enzyme here has a specific shape called an active site. And that active site is what allows for the substrate to fit in and provide the right angle for the chemical reaction. So, enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. However, not all enzymes work with all substrates. You need the right shape. So enzymes are quite specific about the type of substrate they utilize. Moreover, enzymes can be reused. Notice that they don't get used up in the reaction. And finally, enzymes are also quite specific in terms of their temperature sensitivities. If you have the wrong temperature, that enzyme may fail to function. So, how exactly do enzymes actually speed up chemical reactions? Well, on the graph we have on the y-axis energy increasing as it goes up and the progress of the reaction as it goes to the right. And we're going to start with our reactants, two small spheres. And the point overall is that we're going to expect those reactants then to begin to interact with each other. And as they interact, the energy required to make that happen increases. As it peaks, we reach an activation energy, the minimum amount of energy that must be met in order for this reaction to take place. And then as the uh, chemical bond forms, the energy goes down, and we have our product. Now, that temperature, the energy required there, might be hundreds of degrees Celsius or even Fahrenheit. There's no way the body can produce that kind of energy and still stay alive. So this is a major problem. So is there a way that the body can reduce the amount of energy required to make the same product? The answer, yes, enzymes. So we're going to change, instead of our word reactants, we're going to have substrate, which is the two things reacting, and our enzyme. And again, our enzyme simply acts as a platform for this reaction to take place. So we insert our enzyme. The enzyme puts the substrate in the proper orientations, and the energy required to make this reaction work is far less. So we have a lower activation energy, which is exactly why enzymes speed up chemical reactions. It simply lowers the activation energy of the, of the system, which allows this reaction to happen more frequently. As a result, we still end up with the same product and our enzyme didn't get used up, which means we can use our enzyme over again. But how do you control an enzyme? Uh, look at the diagram at the uh, bottom right, and you can see we have an enzyme, we have our substrate, and the active site. What would happen if we were to add some kind of blockage to that active site? Well, our substrate can't, can't enter, and therefore it doesn't work. So we can actually block an enzyme by using what is called a competitive inhibitor. We could also change the active site simply by changing the shape of the enzyme as a whole. So a non-competitive inhibitor can actually insert into the enzyme somewhere else, which could cause a change in the enzyme. As a result, our active site is still manipulated and our substrate can't be reacted. Finally, another way we could actually turn on an enzyme, many enzymes are actually in an inactive state, so we can activate an enzyme by simply removing a piece which returns that enzyme back to its original conformation and our substrate can now be reacted with. So based on what you've learned, respond to the following reflection. I want you to draw a cartoon of an enzyme in action as it breaks down a single macromolecule to form two or more monomers as a product. So here's a couple guidelines. Use at least four colors and four different pictures in this process. Make sure that you include the following vocab terms and underline them as you use them.